one of those experiences growing up where my parents didn't have any particular interest in the arts. Um, we weren't really taken to theatre or galleries when I was growing up. Um, in some ways I think I had an experience which many people have an experience of, which is that the arts are for other people, um, therefore people who are better off or, or are more educated. Um, and so when I was first exposed to the arts, which was at university, I fell in love with it. Um, uh, I was studying to be a journalist at the time at, at university and got involved in uh, amateur theatre. And I was just lucky enough that one of the um, people also involved uh, at this particular amateur theatre her was, was a NIDA graduate and I'd, so through this person I heard about NIDA um, in Sydney and um, thought mm, that sounds far more interesting than being a journalist and um, explored that pathway and so jumped ship from journalism and uh, got into NIDA and that started my lifelong interest and career and love of the performing arts. One of the things that's happened in the arts industry generally in the last probably 20 years is what I call the professionalisation of the arts industry. Um, the majority of people who work in this industry now, whatever field they're in, whether it's arts marketing or producing or, or whatever, they've generally done some tertiary training, um, they've come out as students and they've, they've, they've got a very clear picture of, of a career plan that they want to pursue. Um, and as much as I'm really pleased that that's happened because as an industry I think we're much better regarded by the broader community because it has become a proper industry. We even use the word industry now, which, which we never used to use 20 years ago. But I'm actually nostalgic for those times and, and I guess I came in just at the tail end of this before it began to change, that people kind of fell into it and they built their careers up. You know, they'd probably go into it in their mid-teens um, and just slowly work their way up without necessarily having to go off and do training. You know, a lot of the old the old guys that work in this industry now, when you really talk to them about what started it, they probably just fell into it because it was something that was going at the time and then they've worked their way through. That generally doesn't happen now and there was just something about the industry back in those days. It almost felt like a family in those days. It was the same people. You kind of knew everybody and you knew the way it worked. Everyone just kind of moved around. It doesn't have that sense anymore. It's become much more business, business focused, much more business-like. So I talk to a lot of um, people who are interested in either coming into the arts industry or who are looking to continue to develop their careers. Um, and I'm really becoming very conscious that the younger generations coming into these to this industry, to these industries, have got a very particular and definite picture of what their career path should look like, which is that they come here and that they have this linear progression up to whatever the top job is that they aspire to be. Um, in my experience, that is not the way careers develop. If I'd taken that view of starting here and just going straight up to there, I probably wouldn't be sitting in the job that I'm, I'm in. At various points all the way through my career, I've moved sideways, I've moved backwards, I've moved forwards. Um, it's always about identifying how you can build up the suite of skills that you need to get to wherever you want to get to. The job that I have now as, as Chief Exec of the Arts Centre is actually quite a hard job to explain to someone and you frequently get asked by taxi drivers and others, what do you do? Um, so first off I explain that I work in the arts industry so I then have to explain what that is. And of course, quite often um, people, when they hear the words arts industry, they think visual arts, they think paintings and things that happen on walls. So I explain that, no, it's about the performing arts. So then I have to explain it's about dance and ballet and, and so on. Um, the last few jobs I've had, though, have been working at large, iconic uh, art centres. So whilst the first bit's a bit hard to get people to understand, the arts industry, as soon as I mention places like the art centre, the building with the spire, or the Sydney Opera House, when I worked at the Sydney Opera House, or um, a large art centre called the Wales Millennium Centre that I had in, uh, in the UK, people get it immediately. And they actually understand the concept of large, iconic arts facilities. Um, they may not have been, they may not really have a particular interest in it, but they understand what these places mean in terms of the city's profile and city's reputation. So the first bit's often quite hard to explain, um, but as soon as you can point to a, to a building or a, something that's known to them, it's much more easy to get people to understand. 
to simply relax and be yourself. Um, so often you see people walk into interviews who think they have to be a certain way or they've rehearsed a script and regardless of what questions you ask, they're going to get that script out. They're just going to tell you all those things that, that they want, they think you want to know. Um, or they've, um, they've left their personality um, outside and they think that they have to be almost robotic in simply set, setting out what they've done and uh, what their skills are and where they want to go. What employers are looking for, we will assume at some point that you've actually got the technical skills, otherwise you wouldn't be in the room being interviewed. What we're looking for is what's the personality behind the, the, the face? What is your style? What are you a good cultural fit for the organisation? Um, and really that can only come through if you're relaxed. If, you're, if you know your stuff and you're confident, I think you do relax. Um, because you could have any sorts of questions thrown at you. And if you know what you're talking about, you can respond to them. As an interviewer in a, in a job interview, um, what we're always trying to think of is what are the questions that the person being interviewed probably hasn't thought we're going to ask. So if you prepare too much for these are the questions they probably will answer me, you're not going to be in the mindset that can respond to questions out of left field. But it's always the left field questions that give you the insights that will actually lead you to making the decision or not on whether to employ someone.